one of the highest requested teams since the rebuilding series began. Champions of England once, UEFA Cup winners and a former top flight staple. Now, a mid-table championship side. After 15 years in the second division, it is our challenge to get Ipswich back into the top flight and beyond. European champions. It's time to take over the Blues. It's time to rebuild Ipswich Town. G'day guys, how's it going? It is Jared HD here. First of all, a big thank you for 85,000 subscribers. But secondly, welcome to the Ipswich Town rebuild. As I mentioned in the intro, Ipswich have been a team that have been so highly requested for this series. Top comment on the last rebuild. A big thank you to Brendan Peck for the suggestion. But I'm pretty excited to see how we go with this rebuild will be quite an interesting one. They've got quite a cool squad, I would say. For those of you who have not seen a rebuilding challenge video yet, here are the rules. So the main objective of this is to take a team to the Champions League final. We will be simulating every single game up until the Champions League final, which we will play ourselves. We can make whatever transfers we like. Realistic, unrealistic, it does not matter. There's a big focus on the transfer window, only showing players that we sign. And finally, don't get butt hurt if I sell your favorite player. Let's get into the rebuild. But if you guys do go on to enjoy today's rebuild and you are new around here, make sure that you play Scorpion kick that subscribe button. You know the drill. Also make sure you turn on the bell post notifications to keep up to date as soon as I post a video. So this is what our starting 11 looks like in the first season. Some great young talents in this side, especially Dozzle. But I think the main position I'm gonna be trying to upgrade for this first season, looking at all their potentials and all those factors is going to be the striker. Our strikers are virtually at their peak. Seas has a potential of 70. McGoldrick, he is at his potential. So I'm going to look to bring in a striker that can grow with us as we make our journey back into the Premier League. But regardless, let's get into the business. Let's get into the rebuild. So we've sold our first player for this rebuild. Cole Scoos off to the mighty Fulham for 1.9 million pounds. And our first signing for this rebuild is the young American superstar, Jordan Morris from the Seattle Sounders coming in for 3.5 million. So two massive pieces of goalkeeper news here. Our goalkeeper, our main goalkeeper, Bartosz Bialski, Biakowski, the Polish keeper, off to Wolverhampton for 2.2 million. But we've already got his replacement, Miguel Silva from the Portuguese league coming in for 2.8 million pounds. So here we are halfway through the season on the 1st of January and we are in a great position. We are in the promotion zone at the moment, in the playoff zone, fourth position. That being said, it is extremely tight between us and eighth place QPR, really first and eighth. We could win a game and go to first position. We could lose a game and go to uh, seven. So whether we end the season this high up is a different story, but I'm definitely very very encouraged to buy our star. Looking down the bottom end, it is Rotherham, Barnsley, and Blackburn. Two of those sides did get relegated, of course. I think Wigan were the other side that got relegated in real life. And our first signing for this Ipswich rebuild in January is gonna be a brand new center back, Stephen Corker. Premier League experience coming into the club from QPR for four and a half million pounds. So here we are at the conclusion of the first season and we are Premier League bound. It is us and Newcastle going up to the Premier League next season. I'll have to check in a minute to see whether Sheffield Wednesday, Villa, QPR or Leeds are joining us. But I'm over the moon with this situation. I thought for sure we were going to be maybe playoff bound if not just missing out. So... To get the automatic promotion spot really is a good, good effort. I've found that the biggest thing in these rebuilds and general simula simulation in FIFA is your goalkeeper. If you have a good goalkeeper, you will go well. But that's just my observations. Going down are Blackburn, Barnsley, and Burton Albion. Taking a look at the FA Cup, we did make it to the round of 16, losing to Burnley there, and it is Spurs winning it over Stoke. Liverpool, they won the EFL Cup. Leeds are the team joining us in the Premier League next season. They defeated Aston Villa 3-2. Bayern Munich defeated Atletico Madrid to win the Champions League final. And finally, it is Spartak 
Boscow defeating Manchester United on penalties. That's to win the Europa League title. So, fellas, here is our squad report at the end of the first season. What I like to do, and you guys know it, I like to put in good foundations, and I think we've done just that. Ipswich had pretty good foundations to begin with, but now we head into the Premier League with a lot of work to do. Probably wouldn't have been the worst thing in the world if we were to spend another season in the championship, but that's not the case. We need to spend some money, hopefully we're given money, but we need to spend it on decent players that can keep us in the Premier League. So season one was an outright success. We are headed to the Premier League, a 15 year drought broken in one season with Mr. Rebuild at the helm. So we're gonna be kicking off this second season here with a player departure. Freddie Sears back to the championship, back to Bolton for 1.6 million pounds. And a signing I am very excited about here. We don't have too much money, so we've had to be very strategic. Ramadan Sobby, the Egyptian left winger from Stoke City, coming to Ipswich Town for 6 million pounds. And a player departure here. David McGoldrick off to Bol Vista for 2.9 million pounds. So with the remaining week in the transfer window, my main objective is to bring in a top quality striker with the budget we have. And we've got our man, Jay Adams, someone that a lot of you guys have told me in the comment sections to sign. He is coming in from Birmingham City for 4.7 million pounds. So here we are at the conclusion of the opening transfer window for season two. This is the squad we have to work with up until January. A big problem always seems to happen in this game. As soon as you finish the transfer window, you get a massive injury. This time it was Steven Corker. He's out for four months with an ACL injury, so it's gonna be even harder, but Right now, I'll show you guys, we're, we've got one point in the Premier League. I think we're sitting, yeah, we're not in the relegation zone at the moment. We somehow picked up a draw against Chelsea, but it's going to be quite a difficult battle to survive in the Premier League this season. Let's simulate to January and see how we're going. I'm quite surprised to see that we're out of the relegation zone at this moment. I thought that we were on track to set the record for the worst Premier League season. I honestly thought it was going to be relegation for sure, but we're holding our own at the moment. We're only three points out of the drop zone, but I'm quite surprised to see that we're doing this well. Up the top end of the table, it is Chelsea leading Arsenal by three points. Not surprised to see Crystal Palace in the top four either. Them, Watford and Stoke always tend to be amazing teams in the career mode. But we're in January here. We don't have too much money to work with, but let's see if we can get some transfers done. So you guys know that the best way to attack a rebuild when you don't have too much money in January is to go out and get some decent pre-contract signings. Konstantinos Fortunas, the center attacking midfielder from Olympiakos coming in next season along with Robertson, one of my favorite left backs to get in this year's FIFA. He's coming in from Hull City, both of them on free transfers. And now we are officially broke. So here we are at the end of the second season and for the first time in the rebuild history, we've been relegated. Six points behind Newcastle and Swansea. We virtually swap places with Newcastle and it's gonna be very interesting to see what happens with this rebuild from now on. It might be a blessing in disguise because we might be able to build up our squad stronger and come back into the Premier League even stronger. Or we might get sacked and then I'll be in all disarrays, not knowing what to do, but we'll play that when it comes in a few minutes. But here is the final table. Chelsea go on and win the league, six points ahead of Manchester United. Arsenal and Man City also join them in the top four. And it's gonna be Sunderland and Leeds joining us back in the championship. In the FA Cup, we were eliminated in the round of 16 by Manchester United, who went on to win the title. But we were nowhere to be seen in the EFL Cup. Chelsea, they won that title. Barcelona won the Champions League title. And Chelsea demolished Valencia in the Europa League final. So surprisingly enough, we've kept our job. We get to make this rebuild even more interesting, going back down to the championship and hopefully we bounce right back up. So this season is going to be all about preparation and relaying the stones to have a successful return to the Premier League. We won't be able to attract big name players to the championship, 
but we can bring in some solid squad players and some solid young players. So the first one is going to be Ollie Watkins from Exeter City. He's about 71, 72 rated at the moment. So he's coming in for two and a half million pounds. And our first player departure for this season, Kiefer Moore off to Millwall for 900,000. And a big first team player, a first team signing here, Eamon Barcock, I believe he's Moroccan. He's coming in from Frankfurt for 5.5 million pounds. That is a big, big signing. So here we are, halfway through the championship season, and I'm not surprised to see us this high up the table. Third position, three points behind Hull City, and six points behind Sunderland. I realistically would have thought that we would have been higher up the table. Thought we would... I want to be pushing for an automatic promotion spot. Our squad is pretty damn insane, so I thought we'd be sweeping the championship, but... It's going to be tougher than I thought. Down the bottom of the table, we have Charlton, Huddersfield, and Reading. So our current goalkeeper has come to us and told us that he has accepted a pre-contract deal with someone else for next season. So we're going to nip it in the bud nice and early whilst we don't really need any new signings. We're going to get Mille Sevilla from Anderlecht for £1.5 million to become our new backup goalkeeper. We had one hell of a dominating second half of the season we are going back to the Premier League, one season down and we are straight back up. Top of the championship, 98 points. We're going up with Sunderland. The, the, further, the third team that's going up with us, still to be announced. Once again, we were eliminated in the last 16 of the FA Cup. This year by Watford, Chelsea went on to win the FA Cup. And also, once again, we're nowhere to be seen in the EFL Cup. Stoke City won the EFL Cup. It is going to be Wolves joining us in the Premier League next season. They defeated Brentford 2-0 in the playoff finals. Chelsea lift the Champions League title. And Stoke City, they win the Europa League. Fair play to them. They defeated Liverpool in an all-English affair. So heading back into the Premier League, this is what our squad looks like. I think long-term, it's probably going to be more beneficial that we had that season back in the Championship. It gave us a good amount of time, not really under any pressure, to build our squad, develop some of our young talent, and really turn us into a side that I think will survive in the Premier League next season. We've got a lot of young talent that are near the upper 70s, low 80s, so... I'm very excited to see how we do next season. I think we could push for a mid-table sort of spot. I don't think we're going to be in trouble when it comes to surviving in the Premier League, but that's still to be seen. Hopefully with a good transfer or two, we can survive. So we're back up. Season 4, back to the Premier League. Let's see how we go. Let's see if we can survive. And let's see if we can get one step closer to European champions. Beginning this fourth season here, back in the Premier League, we have a player signing, Kelvin Amien Adu from Toulouse in the French League. He's coming in as our starting right back, 5.5 million pounds. And we're going to bring in our first free agent pickup for this Ipswich rebuild, Santiago Zabala, a Uruguayan centre-back, 20 years of age, 66 overall, coming in on a free transfer. So here we are about halfway through the Premier League season, sitting in 15th position. One more game until it's halfway through, but we're definitely a lot more comfortable than we were this stage in the second season, a lot of room to move up. We're only 10 points behind the Europa League spots, but we're only four points ahead of the relegation zone. It's going to be quite an interesting second half of the season. We need a big push if we want survival. So here we are in January. You guys know what I love to do, especially the second and the fourth season always seem to be gold mines when it comes to pre-contract signings. William Carvalho coming in on a free transfer next season. This is really going to be the turning point of the rebuild, along with Americ Laporte, one of the best defenders in FIFA 17. Both in the high 80s, and both are going to turn us into top side. And here we are about halfway through January. A player departure, Joshua, Joshua Emmanuel off to Birmingham for $3 million. And the signing here in January, I was looking at our squad. It's a pretty good squad, and with the money we have, had, we couldn't get anyone that would really impact it too much. So we're going for a bit of squad depth here. Chris Willock from Arsenal, the youngster, is coming in as our new backup left midfielder. 
So here we are at the conclusion of the Premier League season. We have survived in an extremely tight relegation battle. Look at that. There, there's Watford on in 13th on 39 points. And then Aston Villa in 19th on 35 points. So four points separated 19th and 13th. We fall right in the middle of it, fortunately. We are surviving for a, another season in the Premier League. We've survived the drop. Season 5 is going to be a big one. We finished in 16th position, one point ahead of Wolves. And it is Manchester United winning yet another Premier League title, 9 points ahead of Chelsea and 10 points ahead of Liverpool. In the FA Cup, we are nowhere to be seen. However, it is Chelsea once again winning it. This time, they defeat Swansea in the final. Arsenal won the EFL Cup 3-0 over Leicester. Once again, we're nowhere to be seen, which is a bit disappointing. The Champions League title was claimed by Manchester United and the Europa League title was claimed by Bayer Leverkusen. So that will bring season number four to an end. Let's jump into season five and see how our new pre-contract B signings can do for us. So kicking off this fifth season here, we're going to be signing a brand new goalkeeper, one of my favorite players in real life. He's just signed for Brighton, Hove Albion, in real life. But Matty Ryan from Valencia, the Australian goalkeeper, coming in for £15 million. So here we are on transfer deadline day. We're going to make three free agent signings just because we only have 28 players in the club. We need to pad our numbers a little bit so that we don't have to get forced into any forfeiting or anything like that. So David Asamabolalonga, whatever his name is, the same guy as the guy from the Nottingham Forest. Dan Blackman, an English centre black, centre back, Jesus. He is coming in. He looks pretty decent. I couldn't get their overalls in time, but their valuations look good. And this guy, Ebu Fofana, Ivory Coast, centre mid, £10,000 a week. I'm going to have a look at what these guys are like. So let's have a look. Fofana is 72 rated, which is brilliant to see. Decent weak foot, decent skill moves. Asama Belonga, four star skills, only 67 overall, but still decent. And Blackman, 68 overall. He looks pretty decent as well. You wish, Abramovich. You wish, mate. On the 1st of January, here we are. It's good to see we're making progress. Seventh position, by far the highest we've been at all in this rebuild. And we genuinely are in the title race. Arsenal are first. They're only four points ahead of us. Like most years, it's extremely close. I would say we're extremely close up until probably 13th place Sunderland. It's very close at the bottom as well. Burnley, West Ham, and Swansea all in the drop zone, but we need to focus on the top end of the table. We need to make Champions League football our goal, or at least Europa League, because that would be great. But anyways, we don't have too much money as per normal here in January, so whether we do any business or not is another story, but I'll keep you up to date as per normal. And one of our heroes in this rebuild, Miguel Silva, off to Deportivo for 4.6 million pounds. Thanks for your service, mate. So I know there's a vocal minority of you guys out there that don't like when I make pre-contract signings. Sometimes it can be so hard not to. So I'm gonna cut them off after these two signings from now on, in today's episode, there's going to be no more pre-contract signings, but I just couldn't resist myself. The option is too good, and my logic is, if it's in the game, why not use it to my advantage? It's not cheating, it's implemented by EA, but I'm trying to appeal to both sides here. So, Andrea Bellotti and Eric Dier are going to be coming in. Bellotti for £180,000. And Eric Dier for £110,000. Kevin De Bruyne to sell to Vigo? What the hell? I wasn't expecting that. So here we are at the end of the season. Our best season to date. We finished in sixth position. So unfortunately, not playing in the Champions League next season. However, we might be fortunate enough to get a Europa League berth. Just have to wait and see how the rest of the teams went. Might even make the qualifying stages. But Arsenal won the league. Not sure whether they have... 
friggin' Arsene Wenger still in charge or not, but they won the league, so fair play. And it's going to be Burnley, Bournemouth, and Swansea all getting relegated. What? West Ham, excuse me, just escaping relegation. In the FA Cup, we got eliminated in the round of 16 by Cardiff. Everton went on to win that. Stoke City, they won the EFL Cup. Once again, we're doing absolutely terrible in these domestic competitions. Not even in the last 16. In the Champions League, it was Atletico Madrid lifting that title. And in the Europa League, it was Sevilla winning that. Hopefully, we can be around that place if we do make the Champions League, or the Europa League, I should say, next season. But here is our squad report at the end of this fifth season. I think next season, with the additions of Belotti and Eric Dier, our squad is really going to make a big, big change. We should be playing Champions League football in Season 7, I would hope. We might even have a good enough squad to win the league next season. So, Season 6 will be an interesting one. Will we be in the Europa League or will we just have the Premier League to focus on? Wouldn't be the worst case scenario if it was just a Premier League, but we'll soon find out. Season 5, done and dusted. Let's get into Season 6 and let's ramp up the rebuild. So we're kicking off season six with an unexpected transfer. Real Betis came to me and gave me a transfer offer of like 15 million or something for Che Adams. So I thought, I don't want to sell Che Adams. I'm just going to do a stupid reply. I replied with 45 million. They accepted it. So we've sold a player that has hit his peak. He's reached his potential. He's off to Real Betis for 45 million pounds. And at the same time, we've sold our OG striker, Jordan Morris, the American, is off to Newcastle United for 17 and a half million pounds. Thanks for your service from day one, Jordan. It's now time to go ahead and let's spend the money, spend about the, what, 50, 60 million we've made on these two players and buy a world-class striker to go ahead with Belotti. And we've found our replacement, Andre Silva, almost for the same price that we sold Che Adams for. He comes in from Manchester United, so we weaken a Premier League rival at the same time. Welcome to Ipswich Town, Andre Silva. We've also had a player departure. Adam Webster has been here since day one. He has been brilliant for us, but now he's off to Athletic Bilbao for 14 and a half million. And we're going to bring in a brand new central attacking midfielder, Bart Ramzala, who I've never used this year in FIFA, from PSV coming in for 26 million pounds. So here we are, halfway through the Premier League season, and I cannot believe this, we are sweeping the league. Not a single loss so far. 15 wins, 4 draws, 49 points. We're 15 points ahead of Manchester United. This is insane. If we lose the Premier League title from here, it could go down as one of the biggest chokes in sports history. Taking a look at the drop zone, not that it concerns us anymore, but it's West Brom, Aston Villa, and Leeds all in the bottom three spots. So we choked big time in the second half of the season. Halfway through, we had zero losses. We end the season with seven losses. However, it does not matter. We still finish as Premier League champions in this sixth season. Three points clear of Tottenham and five points clear of Manchester United. It seems like it was us three that absolutely dominated the Premier League this season. Southampton were about, what's that, 16 points off? And the three sides getting relegated are Aston Villa, Leeds, and West Brom. We also won the FA Cup. We defeated Chelsea in the final. That is great to see. We couldn't do the treble, however. Once again, we falter in the EFL Cup. Chelsea get their revenge there. The Champions League title was taken out by Atletico Madrid. Hopefully, that is us in Season 7. And we did get the treble. We defeated Schalke in the Europa League final 3-0 so that is a perfect season for us. So we absolutely killed it this season. I think we're one world-class goalkeeper away from winning the Champions League final. Let's go and do that in season number seven. So here we are at the back end of the transfer window, the opening transfer window for season seven. We've been trying to get a brand new goalkeeper and we've finally done it. I've been trying to sell Matt Ryan and get some funds in to put towards a world-class goalkeeper. I've tried some player deals plus money for goalkeepers, including Matt Ryan. 
the clubs keep pulling out because he wants too much on the wages or something like that. But we've finally got a trade deal done and dusted. Sergio Rico from Sevilla, 22 million pounds plus Matty Ryan. 86 rated, our squad is going to be looking good. So this is going to be our group for our opening Champions League expedition in this Ipswich rebuild. Group A, we have Dortmund, Spartak Moscow and Club Bruges. Hopefully we can qualify into the knockout rounds. I would say Dortmund's going to be our biggest competition. But let's simulate to the midway through of January, uh, December I should say, midway point of December and see if we've made the knockouts. We absolutely qualified with ease. This just solidifies my thought that we are gonna absolutely dominate this Champions League. Invincibles for the first half of the Premier League last season, and we go invincible in our Champions League group. And if you look to the top right hand corner of your screen, you will see that we are taking on Bayer Leverkusen in the round of 16. Hopefully we can get through nice and quickly and get to the Champions League final. Although touch wood, I just didn't jinx myself. It is the 1st of January here. 19 games played in this Premier League season, season number seven, and we are in the exact same place we finished last season. Top of the Premier League, baby. Can we go back to back? We'll have to find out. And in the drop zone, it is QPR, Swansea, and Watford. So when we're in the knockout rounds of the Champions League, we always seem to have big problems with our our defensive backups. We always seem to have a player get injured or a player suspended or something like that. So I'm nipping it in the bud and getting us a little bit of insurance here. Mbemba from Newcastle United is going to be our brand new backup center back. He's 83 rated, so if one of our center backs go, he can easily fill the void. So our first simulated game here in the Champions League for this Ipswich rebuild taking on Bayer Leverkusen, the first leg away in Germany. Can we get off to a strong start? William Carvalho is suspended for this game, so Tommy Bishop comes into the starting 11. How do we go? They've got a pretty strong side. They have a lot of young, but high potential players in their squad. Eric Deere gets a slight little injury, but he stays on. Wendell gets them a goal. That is not the start we we're after. Come on, lads, let's step up and get an equalizer. Let's get an away goal. Come on, 20 minutes to go. Somebody, please, Belotti, Silva, step up. Five minutes to go. No. So we're at home here for the second leg. We have Cavallo back into our starting 11. We have a 1-0 deficit that we're chasing. So we need to win this game 2-0. We cannot allow them to score. We need to put on a big top quality performance. Otherwise, we're eliminated. Belotti in the fifth minute. It's all tied up, baby. Come on. Let's get a second, let's get a third, let's get a fourth, let's get 10 bloody goals. The 40th minute, we're approaching half time. It's 1 0 so at this stage. It's extra time for Fortunis off the bench. Two minutes on the field, he gets us in the lead. At this stage, we're off to the quarterfinals. They score, they go through. Bellotti makes it 3 0. There it is. I said we needed a dominant second leg, and a dominant second leg is what we get. We are quarterfinal bound. So we are into the quarterfinals, and once again, there are a side that we always seem to take on in the rebuilds. We are taking on AS Monaco. They have an insane squad in career mode, so it's going to be quite a challenge. So we're at home here for the first leg. Can we get another 3-0 performance like we did against Leverkusen last time out? That would be quite good. No Andre Silva. He's out for about two months with an injury, so that is not what we want. Lamar gets them an away goal in the seventh minute. That is not what we want either. We have a big challenge now. We need to get a goal back. We can't let them have this big an advantage. Into the second half, somebody step up for us. Please, half an hour, under half an hour. Belotti gets it all tied up. It is one all. Can we get a second goal? Come on, Belotti. I know you want to. He cannot, but we're one all heading into the second leg. They have an away goal. The second leg here away, traveling to Monaco. Come on, we need to score a goal. If we don't score, they go through on away goals. So, clean sheet is a must, but most importantly, goals. Belotti, step up early. We get it in the minutes. Could you ask for a better start? Barkuk, he's been here for a while. He gets us the goal. Laporte gets injured, but he's still on the field. Hopefully, he doesn't get a long-term injury 
at this stage we're going through, I don't want to jinx myself, a second goal he would make it so much more comfortable. 20 minutes to go. No, Fabinho Bellotti. We're still going through. We're still going through. We're going through. Barcock and Bellotti. Oh, wow. Bellotti has really stepped up this season. We're through to the semifinals. No, he was out. He's out for six weeks. We are getting so injured. I am so lucky that I went and got Mbemba in January. An all-English affair for the Champions League semi-finals. Manchester United. We've taken them on too many times, just like Monaco. And we have to defeat them once again. The other semi-final, PSG versus Bayern Munich. Which one of them will be in the final? God knows. But we can't focus on the semi-final. The other one, we have to focus on ours. No Laporte, no Andre Silva. The odds are stacked against us. Traveling to Old Trafford here for the first leg. Keep goals. We need to keep a clean sheet and we need to score goals. Let's do exactly what we did in that second leg against Monaco or the second leg against Leverkusen. A big start is needed. Look at their squad. That is just unfair. Trap in goals. They've got Griezmann, Pogba, Rashford. That squad by as well. Oh, wow. And Smalling, Smalling of all people, gets them the lead. That is not what we're after. We need a goal now. Corcoron from Bemba. Half an hour to go. We need an equalizer. Let's not be 1-0 down like we were again. Yes, Ward. Get in there. Ward gets us an away goal. That is huge. Okay. I can deal with that. One all heading into the second leg. Champions League semi-final, the second leg at home. All we have to do is keep a clean sheet. We have the away goal advantage in our hands at the moment. But if they score a goal, it gets cancelled. It gets cancelled out straight away. That side is insane. So we know that we have to be on our end game. No Laporte, no Andre Silva. Andre Silva might not even be back for the final if we make it. We have to make it. Barkok is injured that is not what we want, but it is still nil all. Let's not jinx ourselves. Just over half an hour. Pogba yellow carded. 20 minutes to go and it's still nil all. Come on. Let's hold on. Let's get a goal. Five minutes. If we hold on, we're going through. Nil all. We go through to the Champions League final on away goals rule. It looks like we parked the bus because that looks like one of the most boring matches you'll see. So it is going to be Bayern Munich versus Ipswich Town in the 2023 Champions League final. This has been one crazy rebuild. Will it continue? Will it end here? We're going to find out soon. But before we find out, let's have a look around the rest of the leagues. Leon defeated Schalke in the Europa League final. We go back-to-back -back Premier League champions. A great season, only four losses, defeating Chelsea by six points. Swansea, Watford, and QPR all relegated. But the main thing is, if we lose tonight against Bayern Munich, we get another shot next season. We did win the Community Shield. We won the FA Cup final. So that makes it a treble already. Once again, we didn't win the AFL Cup. We actually made it to the last 16 this time, but... And we also won the Copa Europe against Atletico Madrid. So that's four titles this season already. But as always, fellas, we have a look at our squad report before the Champions League final, just in case it is the conclusion of the rebuild. We get to have a good look and see the squad we've built. Who knows whether we're actually going to get to go into an eighth season. It's going to be interesting. I'm interested to see how this team gels together. We've built one hell of a team, and I've got a great sense of connection to this side. There's certain rebuilds that I've done in the past, like this one, the Portsmouth one, and the Aston Villa one especially, where I'm playing through it, and I just feel a great sense of the journey. The journey was just amazing, and I just feel connected to the team. I feel like that with this Ipswich team. But the moment is now here, fellas. Ipswich Town versus Bayern Munich, the 2023 Champions League final.
the seven incredible seasons? Will the journey end here, or will we fight for another season? Let's find out. Oh, here we go. Good tackle, Barkov. Great ball. Through to Wani. Oh, he gives us the lead in the second minute. Could you ask for a better start to a game? Andrea Belotti, our freaking 90, almost 90 rated superstar striker, gives us the lead. What a piece of football from Barkov, especially. Great turn, great ball, and a great finish there from Belotti. You wouldn't expect anything less. That is the perfect way to start the game. They're on the attack here, looking for an equalizer. And Bolo getting straight past our defense, going to Oscar. Good save from Sergio Rico. Here we go. Belotti over the top to Sobby. Ramadan Sobby doing some nice skills. Come on, going through. Oli Watkins, what a terrible touch. Here we go. William Carvalho, can we get a second goal? Belotti back to Carvalho. Vanessa's is blocked. Shot again. Weak. Oscar on the attack here. Going to Mbolo. They turn, they shoot, they miss. Free kick here for Bayern Munich just before half time, 39th minute. Oscar, 27 yards out. Sanabria jumps over it. He shoots. What is Rico doing? That is terrible goalkeeping. Thankfully, it hits the crossbar. It's still on though. It goes through. Saved. Get rid of it. No. Saved again from Rico. He makes up for it. Our clearing needs to be better. They're on the attack here, straight off the kickoff. Let's not give it away. Oh, that's a terrible challenge. That could be a red card. Oh dear, that's a bad challenge. Only a yellow. Oh, good stuff, William Carvalho. Can we hit him on the counter-attack now? Great ball through to Rumsala. He's one-on-one -on -one with Thibaut Courtois. Hits that one. What a save. He even held on to it. They're on the counter-attack now by Munich. Sanabria running down the line. We're chasing with Barkuk. They're looking for someone in the middle. Get rid of it, dear. It falls straight back out to Javi Martinez. Through there, Alaba, what a tackle from Eric Dier. Now can we hit him on the counter? Some great passing, we're gonna go over the top. I have no idea why William Cavallo is so far out wide, but it's still on. It's lucky he is. We go, Barkuk, he got the assist and it's saved. Ramzala, passing that one. We're looking for a second goal. We see Ramadan Sobi out wide. Heads that one, Fortunus off the bench. To Ramadan Sobi. Oh, he tries to hit it. Bologna, it falls to Bologna. He scores the goal. There it is. That's the second goal. Surely that's going to see us get the Champions League title. Bologna picking up a brace here in the final. Another great instinctual finish there from the Italian striker. I want to see that one on the replay. It was absolute havoc. Someone was just trying, everyone was just trying to have a crack at it. I thought for sure it was going to be Fortunus. We're lucky that Renato Sanchez missed judged the, the ball, and then that's just a great finish. Block it, block it. Yes, he blocks it. Get to it, Belotti. Can he chip Courtois? Oh, he puts too much on it. Bayern Munich looking to find some glimmer of hope. They're going to be all out attack, no doubt about it. they got two minutes to get two goals. It looks like we're going to be Champions League winners. Eric Dier gets rid of that one. It falls to Kimmich. Alaba, it falls to them at the back post. They completely miss it. That should just be about it, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get rid of it. The Ipswich fans are starting to celebrate. Their Champions League drought is over. There it is. After seven incredible seasons, we are champions of Europe. A 2-0 victory against Bayern Munich in what was an action-packed final. Thank you guys for watching this rebuild. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like on the video. Bloody Scorpion, kick that subscribe button if you are new around here. We're on the road to 100,000 subscribers. Make sure that you follow me on Instagram, Snapchat, all that good stuff. But most importantly, I hope you have a fantastic day. It's been Jared HD here. I'm out. Peace.